Welcome back to another video. My name is Derek, and today I'm going to be fulfilling one of your requests. At 138 decibels says, hey man, would love to see a video on the Xbox Series X. Those can be a bit difficult in my experience. And they are. This comment comes from the PS5 HDMI repair video. So 183 decibels. Let's do it, Xbox Series X. At Just Inspired Kent says, I keep wanting to use this method, but I still find myself stripping out all the solder and putting down fresh leaded solder. Unnecessary, I know, so not sure why I can't stop, lol. And I totally know what you mean. And in fact, there are some good reasons for it. Now, if you're a little confused to the context of this comment and you haven't seen the PS5 HDMI repair, I show a quick method to remove the HDMI and put it back where you basically only have to heat up the motherboard one time by using the factory solder on the board. In today's video, I'm gonna show you the way that I do it, the same way that Just Inspired Kent does, which is cleaning out the through holes, removing all the factory solder, and applying a leaded solder. And we're gonna talk about the benefits. So let's get started. In today's video, I'm gonna be working on this Xbox Series X. I can already tell that someone has tried to get into the device. See here, I guess they were looking for the screw hole there, kind of scraped at it. If we look inside the HDMI port, you can actually see that it's expanded and part of that part of it's damaged. So we're not getting any image on this device. Let's go ahead and take it apart and get it fixed. Now we just need to pry on the little tab here and twist. And that should pop right off. We got a couple more screws down here that we can take out. All right, now we have one screw right here that we can take out. There, disconnect that. And here we're able to pull out the good old Master Chief fan, kind of dirty. All right, we've got a screw here holding down the cover to the disk drive. So we'll go ahead and take that screw out. And the cover should just pop out. Mm. And then we have the connectors here to the disk drive that we can pop out as well. All right, now that we have that out, I'm gonna remove this cable from this connector and this connector. Now you can't just pull on these. There's a little tab that you need to click up so we'll go ahead and gently get in there and flip up this. There, you see that? Oh, we can pop this connector. It's like all oily inside of here too. And I believe everything is ready at this point to come out. Oh, we got one connector, forget right here. Now this one's a little tricky as well. Instead of pulling something up, we're gonna be pushing it down to the actual, on top of the connector. You'll actually feel a little metal bracket that pushes down and then it just pops right out like that. All right, here we go. We'll set that off to the side here and Take a look at what we've got going on here. After washing my hands, because this is getting gross, let's put on some gloves, because this is nasty. Look at that. It's gross. 
All right, right here we can pop up this little plastic shield. And here we've got the power supply. We got three screws down here in the corner. All right, on the power supply, we've got a screw here, there, there, and there. All right, we also have all these screws here. I also have all these screws here that are holding down this shield. Right, there's one more screw here and another screw here. Carefully take that shield off. And our power supply should come up now. We got a couple more clips here. Disconnect that guy. And then there's a clip here. And pull up. All right. You could just nudge these back into place if they get bent out and it'll clip in just fine when you when you go to reinstall it. Now, why remove all of the solder from the through holes and the pads? Well, the factory solder, in my experience, isn't the best on the Xboxes. And it's much easier to get a component to be completely flush against the board if you completely remove the solder. That way, the pins are already making contact with the pads even before they receive solder. Theoretically, if the pins have compression against the pads, it'll work without solder. And that's basically as close as you want it to be anyway. Leaded solder is much easier to work with as well. I just love the way that it melts versus a non-leaded solder. So let's have a conversation down below. What do you think is the better method? Using the factory solder, like I showed in the PS5 video, or wicking everything off and starting from fresh? Let's get back to the video. All right, so we've got a new HDMI here. All the pins look really good. You take some flux and apply it to the board. So we're going to be removing all of the factory solder. I got my wick here, and we're going to see how much of this factory solder we can remove without adding any solder to it. The pads tend to wick fairly easily without adding anything else, where these through holes need additional help. I'll even wick, wick away these ground pads. Here I've got some low melt leaded solder. You can even add this low melt before you remove the HDMI to all of the pins and legs and it'll help remove in the process. 
add plenty of flux and really combine and mix the factory solder with the low melt. Come in again with our wick. And this time we're really going to suck out all of it. You can use a rework station to help in this process, but with the right low melt wick and temperature on your iron, you should be able to get it all out. I'm going to add some leaded solder to the legs and really secure them in place. Now all of the pads are touching the pins and we're going to add some flux and individually place fresh leaded solder on each one of the pins using the soldering iron. making sure we don't get too much bridging, but a little bit of bridging is almost uh, desirable for a little bit at least to help drag and get uh, the right amount of solder across all of the pads. You just want, don't want to end up with bridging. All right, after having soldered on and cleaned up the HDMI port, it's time to reassemble this. First, let's clean off here uh, the old thermal paste, it's kind of dry. Let's apply some thermal based. And now we'll just take the time to reassemble everything, making sure we don't miss a single screw, a single bracket, a single anything. There's a lot that goes into making sure that this goes together properly. So take your time, make sure you know where everything goes. All right, let's plug it in. And let's turn it on. All right. There you go, there's the image. All right, so as you can see, it's working now. That's how to replace the HDMI on the Xbox Series X. It's definitely quite a teardown. I'd say it's, a, a, it's probably the biggest teardown of all the consoles. There are a lot more screws in the PS5, but the Xbox Series X has a lot more moving components and it can be quite the puzzle to take apart and put back together. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you learned something, like the video. Let me know in the comments below if there's something you'd like to see in a future video. Thanks a ton for watching, and we'll see you next week for a bunch of videos.